The poet Maya Angelou once said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Well, there's a lot of people in the world of baseball who seem to have an issue with the way that our favorite guy, Shohei Otani, and his agent are handling his free agent talks. And we're here to say, we told you so, right? Come on, let's dive into the madness and let's take a look at who's throwing a fit. I'm looking at you, Buster Olney. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, Mike, just a quick programming note before we get into today's uh, cry fest from Major <laughs> League Baseball. Uh, we will be going down to three episodes a week next week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be our schedule until right before spring training, but we will have some short-form content in between uh, those episodes for you. So just an FYI, we will be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mike, on today's show, Trout, not going anywhere. Let's talk about it. And what pick did the Halos get for the 2024 draft? Well, we're going to talk about that and maybe who they could even pick. But let's get to the Otani nonsense, Michael, and yep. MLB's issues with his uh, his uh, going abouts with his free agency. Yeah, if you've been under a rock, let me catch you up and get everyone up to speed on what, what's happening with Shohei Otani. A lot of people are throwing a fit. So we've often said that there isn't a fan base more appreciative of who Shohei Otani is and what he's done for the franchise than the Angel fans. Yes. In fact, Johnny and I have argued that the bond that fans have with Shohei Otani, Angel fans that they have with Shohei Otani, is due to all of the adversity that he has faced and had to deal with Early on in his MLB career, we, mm -hmm. we cheered for him when the Angels signed him. We rooted for him in spring training when Dodger blog said, dodge that one while he oh, was those. having a really bad spring training. We cheered for him when he had Tommy John surgery. We cheered for him when he tried to pitch in 2020 and couldn't do it. So Angel fans have been able to reap the reward of Shohei Otani's last three years and be the, a part of the the major highlights of his career and we had to cheer through those bad seasons to get to the good seasons and Johnny that's really the point Angel fans have been dedicated to Shohei Otani the same way that Shohei even amongst all the chaos and all the losing has been dedicated to the Angels and let me say the number of Angel fans I've seen who are like I'd love to have him back but I also just want him to succeed wherever yep. he goes yep that is an Angel fan sentiment through and through, my yep. friends. So, Mike, let's talk about why we're here and why everyone in, base in baseball is throwing a hissy fit yeah. over Shohei Otani's free agency. Now, it all started with Jeff Passan's article uh, on ESPN. He had a free agency preview. He briefly stated, if Otani visits, or I should say, if visits between Otani and a team are reported publicly, it will be held against the team. So the circles will be tiny and tight. Now, Passan is a reliable reporter. He's usually yep. breaking news on moves yep. and whatnot. So there's some credibility there. So as word began to spread that Otani met with the Blue Jays, there were some jokes mm -hmm. the other day, right? And we even joked on Twitter like, oh, they broke the rules. They're out right. of the running. Like no more <laughs> yeah. Blue Jays. And that's yeah. just because we want Otani to come back. So we're just making a joke. Then Tuesday, Dave Roberts tells the media that he met with Otani a few days ago, Dodgers manager Dave Roberts. And you could see in the video, he had he had a slight hesitation Correct. in doing so. And later on, Brandon Gomes, who was a Dodgers EVP and GM, he said repeatedly that he wouldn't comment on Dave Roberts saying the Dodgers met with Otani. And because it's the Dodgers, Mike, and they were the butt of the joke, well, of, you know, the joke that's, well, I guess the Dodgers are eliminated too. Everyone lost their collective minds, right? Right, right. yeah. Yeah. So, Johnny, my, my favorite uh, losing of their minds was Dave O'Brien of The Athletic. He, he oh, covers brother. the Braves. And he said, Otani and his agent don't want news leaked of meetings with teams. Say such leaks will be held against that team. So many folks 
And many folks are normalizing this instead of calling it for what it is, pretentious BS. We all know he's an incredible player. Just negotiate and pick a team. Then Chelsea Janes of the Washington Post said, if Shohei chooses not to go to the Dodgers because Dave Roberts told the truth about their unspoken but incredibly obvious pursuit of a once-in-a-lifetime talent, then we will all learn a lot more about Shohei from that than anything he said in years. So I think we're starting to learn a lot about baseball <laughs> people and baseball talking heads, aren't we, yeah. Michael? Yeah, Blake Harris is a uh, Dodgers blogger and fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, this whole thing is ridiculous. If a player is truly going to rule out a team because the manager said they had a meeting that everyone knows about, there are bigger issues here. And here's the irony with him, Johnny, is that Blake Harris was all in on the joke of the day before when it was about the Blue Jays. Yes, when it's about the Dodgers, he grabs his binky and his blankie and he throws a fit. <laughs> uh, Mike, this is the one that was kind of the kicker here. Buster Olney, Olney of ESPN. He wrote a whole article about it, and this is the headline. Shohei Otani's top secret free agency is silly hmm. and a missed opportunity for him and the sport. And this is what he went on to say. Otani's reflex has always seemed to be uh, to bear as little media and fan responsibility as possible. False. Uh, as was clear <laughs> in his years in Anaheim. But the biggest star in sports, Michael Jordan, Derek Jeter, Patrick Mahomes, etc., all understood that by speaking with the media... They are speaking to the patrons of the sport, the fans, the paying customers. Otani has not yet embraced that opportunity. And as he nears his decision in the midst of an imposed information blackout, he has missed a chance to serve the game he loves. And, and Mike, that's what sticks out to me here. Yeah. Missed a chance yeah. to serve the game he loves. So let me let me spell this out for everybody and what Come they on. mean when they say this. Otani isn't doing what we, the media, want him to do. Otani isn't making clear what team he's going to. Oh no, this must mean Otani isn't going to the Dodgers like we all want him to. Otani going back to the Angels means he doesn't want to win. Yeah. Oh no, we can't monetize Otani rumors and post that he had breakfast at at IHOP at eight in the morning in Nashville <laughs> and get clicks off of it. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for O'Brien to call Otani and his camp's request for privacy pretentious BS that that just speaks volumes I think oh, about 100%. him and about all of these media people and isn't isn't this what we've seen from the media for the last three years and about we, Shohei and Otani we, and we've been saying it for the last two years that we've been on this show right yeah yeah and and, and so I, I let me just let me just say what we have been saying for Come the on. last couple of years all Come right on. so we've said this before I'm going to repeat it again Shohei Otani owes nobody Nothing, nothing. Right? And, and Johnny, I know you got an English degree. That was probably a really terrible nope, sentence, but I just more appropriate than ever, Michael. There perfect, you go. Perfect. Also the most dynamic player in baseball, Shohei Otani, who's brought millions of eyes from all over the world to the product. Preach. He owes you and me and fans. Nothing. Fans nothing. of other teams clamor to have them, have him on their team. And, and, and when he's doing MVP things, right? right. But it seems like they're going to jump ship the minute that he's hurt or the minute that he struggles or the minute that there's, there's a hint that he's not going to come to their team and he's going to go back to the halos. Right. Right. And, and the bottom line here, Mike, MLB writers, fans, talking heads, they're all making Otani a villain yep. and he hasn't even made a decision yet. Right. And for all we know, Jeff Passan could be completely wrong about this, sure. right? I know everybody's sure. adhering to it, but isn't that what we've been saying for the last two years? That if Otani doesn't do what people want him to do, yeah. they make him a villain. And if Otani yeah. comes back to the Angels, he's a villain. And the bottom line is this, Mike, Shohei likes his privacy, and that's mm -hmm. something all Angel fans are familiar with and yeah. are used to and have accepted. In fact, you know who hasn't let on? about their discussions with Shohei? <laughs> Who, Johnny? The Angels! They're right. the ones right. actually adhering to what Otani is reported to want. Yep. And I think that's key, Mike. I think that is why Perry Manassian has been hush-hush. I think that's why Ron Washington played it the way that he played it yesterday or the day before. And perhaps this is a litmus test for Shohei Otani. Sure. Saying, can you keep a secret? Can you keep your mouth shut? Can you guard me can you protect me if i'm going to sign a lifelong contract with you can you respect my one little request yeah. if it means that i'm going to sign a contract with you here's why it's ridiculous and a locked on every day or pointed this out on twitter in an interaction with you yesterday they said 
Of course he's not going to trust the media simply mm. because look what happened when he cleaned out his locker and was in Japan. First yeah. of all, he cleaned out his locker and was shifting some things around. And then the video in Japan was from years ago. It yeah. wasn't even like a legitimate video. And then he was in the dugout showing Zach Neto how to swing at that particular pitch that right. he made like the next day. earlier, right? Like he's in the dugout. And so, yeah, I wouldn't trust the media either if I was Shohei Otani. And I get when you're Shohei Otani, like the Michael Jordans of the world and the LeBron James of the world and the Patrick Mahomes of the world, I get when you're that guy that media people want to talk to you and interact with you. I just find it hilarious that there's all of a sudden a disrespect if you don't do what we want you to do or you don't behave the way that we want you to behave. It just tells me, Johnny, that they haven't been paying attention. They think no. Shohei Otani is like everybody else, and he's proven to us on the baseball field that he is in a category all by himself. And if he's in a category by himself on the field, he's probably a really interesting, eclectic guy off the field. He's a humble guy from all indications. And maybe he's not a media, excuse me, a media whore like some people are, <laughs> right? And he doesn't want all of this attention. And perhaps he is a very fun guy, humble guy, respectful guy to be around. And if he can make a simple request like, hey, can we just keep this here? Because there's a lot at stake. And I would want to make sure that we're able to control the narrative. Why wouldn't you honor that? If I'm hiring somebody at my business, I'm going to honor that simply because I want to honor them because it's not about what everybody else thinks. It's about what he wants and what he's thinking. And if he's going to be your employee and you can't honor that, then I think that that's an indication as to why he shouldn't go to your team. And if I'm Dave Roberts and I'm asked that question, Dave Roberts can have some fun with it. He said, well, I'm not going to lie. And I get that. You don't yeah. have to lie. Yeah. You can say, I think it's obvious that every team in baseball wants this guy on their team. And so we're going to take the appropriate steps that we need to take to try to get this guy on our team. And that's all you have to say about that. Right. You don't have to make it a big deal. And the fact that it is a big deal is absolutely asinine to, in my opinion, John. It's a, it's a big deal because it's the Dodgers and everybody claims that he's going to go to the Dodgers and fine. You can believe what you want and that's fine. But because there's tension there. It's, oh, no, he's not going to go there anymore. Oh, right. no. Right. And, and, and So shout out to Neha, who had that yes. observation on yes. Twitter. because Thank she's, you. Because th the fact is this, Mike, who's been in control of the Shohei Otani narrative for the last three years? It's been the media. Right. And now that Shohei has all the power and all the influence and all the headlines and they have nothing. Right. They're throwing fits. They're yeah. peeing their diapers, Mike, because yeah. they can't handle the fact that they don't have the power in this situation, and Shohei does. And can I just speak to Buster only for just a moment? What's best for baseball? Right. Like, seriously, like this isn't best for baseball. As this if he is hasn't already done enough for baseball. And this is what you're going to point out? The yeah. Oakland A situation is happening, and this is what you're going to point out? Julio Urias and, and his situation, and this is what you're going to point out? Yeah. Rob Manfred and all of the ridiculous stuff he's done against minor... And this is what you're going to point out. Come yeah. on, like be better, do better. That's absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. The other thing is Otani doesn't want a circus, Mike. He, he's not no. LeBron James. He's no. not going to do the decision. Right. He's not, it's not going to be an ESPN thing. And that's what ESPN wants. They want a decision. They want to make a whole thing out of this, uh, make a whole clown show yes. and, and circus out of this. And Otani doesn't want that. And the best thing about this whole situation is Otani's probably sleeping comfortably in his bed and not yes. worried at all about this. And he's going to continue to be who he is. So good on him. And if you and I are called Shohei apologists, sign yeah. me I'll up. Put, I'll put on my Shohei face shirt right now. Yes. And you can call me names. But here's, Let's go. Here's the thing. You said he's eclectic. The guy eats, sleeps, and breathes baseball and then yeah. sleeps 12 hours a day and does yeah. it again. That's eclectic, and right. that's uh, a mystery on the part of Shohei Otani. So, listen, we appreciate you making Locked on Angels your first listen of the day. We're just getting started here. We had to get that out of the way. We needed to tear down of this ridiculous narrative going around right now. So, coming up, where do the Angels land for 2024 in the draft, and which player might they select? Well, we're going to get to that coming right up. Hey, we know that you come to Locked On Angels for all sorts of sports hot takes. And that first segment was hot, hot, hot. And the reality is, is that it's an escape from the crazies of life and maybe the MLB crazies, but also the, the legitimate crazies in life. And, and if I could just talk for a minute, I, I would love to invite you to prepare for the realities, the crazies in, in real life. 
And that's where Jace Medical can really help you. And they're sponsoring today's show. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right now. And it's happening right in the middle of a really bad flu season. If you've noticed, Johnny has been struggling with his voice and coughing and he sounded Of course, we have to do a rant, a rant on the day that <laughs> yeah. I can't even talk. Yeah. When he leans out of the frame, for those that are watching, it's because he's gagging because he has to clear his throat. I don't think you needed to know that. Anyway, here's the good news. You don't have to worry about all of this medication nonsense. When you sign up, and get yourself a Jace case. A Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses like UTIs, respiratory and sinus infections, skin infections, and more. And you can get started by visiting jacemedical.com and complete uh, your physician, I'm sorry, your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to do this then right now, do it today. And if you go to jacemedical.com, we're going to help you out. If you put in our promo code locked on, you'll get $20 off your order. So get what you need, the antibiotics that you need, and visit jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And of course, you've got Locked On Angels, where We've got you covered Monday through Friday up yep. until next week. We'll be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, locked on every day. Or just so you know, locked on has launched the first ever 24 seven national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Go search locked on sports today. Get all the best and top stories in sports. Again, probably Otani at the top of that one, of course, but they're also covering NFL, NBA, NHL, it's all there for you with Locked On's local experts and their national shows. So head on over to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever 24-7 streaming sports channel. Before the Otani news broke yesterday, there was news about another Angel superstar, and that is Mike Trout. Jeff mm -hmm. Fletcher of the OC Register tweeted, Just to end whatever speculation might have been out there, Perry Manassian said today that Mike Trout is not getting traded 100%. Then Sam Blum tweeted, Mike Trout definitely will not be traded in the offseason. Perry Manassian said it's likely it was never going to happen, but he said it definitively today. And then Rhett Bollinger then tweeted, GN Perry Manassian said, Mike Trout is not getting traded 100%. Johnny, as we talk about Otani and some of the things that we know is locked on every dayers with the Angels, here's a question I have for you about Mike yeah. Trout. Is this even news for Angel fans? Let me first say that uh, in terms of the beat writer, Infinity Stones, uh, shout out to our friend Sarah Valenzuela <laughs> yes. uh, from the LA Times. She didn't get to report that. She's, you know, she's getting better. She's she yeah. had some issues over the season. And so she's getting better. But uh, yeah, we had Jeff, yeah. Sam and Rhett all confirmed that right. Harry said, yep, no trade. Mike, all at the same time. <laughs> it's not news. And right. I don't think it's ever been news. And I no. don't think it was ever a question for a lot of Angel fans. Now, there are fans who might have suggested that Trout does get traded yeah. so that they can get some pieces back. Uh, they're the same ones who probably wanted Shohei to be traded to get some pieces back. And and I understand the logic behind that. I understand what that uh, means and how that would improve the team down the road. But there was never going to be a rebuild, especially yeah. with Artie Marino. I said this the other day, and, and I think it's great enough to bring it up again for as uh you know, optimistic and delusional as you and I can be sometimes where we get called delusional. Mm -hmm. If you think Artie Marino is going to do a rebuild, right? Welcome to the delusion couch, my friend <laughs> with Mike and John. You. <laughs> yeah. I got a spot for you right here. Some popcorn. Uh, so again, Mike, there's never going to be a rebuild. Trout's not going anywhere, nor would I want him no. to go anywhere. No. And while the face of the franchise for the last three years has been Shohei Otani and could very well continue to be you and I and a lot of Halo fans have an attachment to Mike Trout because for the first six, seven years of his career, he's a perennial MVP. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's yeah. the guy carrying this team on his back. And we've seen him do amazing things on and off the field. I know the last three years have been tough on him and Angel fans because he's been hurt. First, it was the calf issue in 21. Then it was the back issue that kept him out for some time in 22. This year it was the hamate bone that broke in 2023. I My hope is, Mike, is that Trout has all of those issues figured out. It sounds like, to me, the physical issues 
have been figured out because yeah. he's hired people to help him out with that. You can't help breaking your hamate bone. Right. It's just going to happen. Right. So to me, I think we're in for a treat watching Mike Trout in 2024. Ron Washington was also on MLB Network, and he was asked about Trout. And I love what he had to say, Johnny. He said, I want Mike to be a leader and bring his mm -hmm. winning ways to the field every day. I don't want Mike to think about what's happened the past four or five years. Mm. I want him to think about what happened prior to those four or five years when the angels were the top dog. That's the mindset I want him to have. We'll get there. Not worried about what happened in the past. We'll learn from that. I asked him to tell me how he feels about how the angels got there and how we can move forward and be better. Johnny, I love this quote because so often humans, but in sports specifically, we're always running from something yeah. and you can't run for something. If you're running from something, if Ooh. you have your head turned around, Preach. you're not going to be able to see where you're going. Right. Preach. And so this is, I think part of the issue with the angels have been facing over the last really six years to 10 years yeah. is they're trying not to be a bad team, but how about if they just attempt to be a really good team and focus on how to do that. And I think what Ron Washington is building with Mike Trout specifically is he's building a leader, somebody who is already a leader on the field sure. and somebody who's humble, but now he's teaching him how to lead others in a way that fits who Mike Trout is. He's not asking him to be somebody like a LeBron James. He's asking him to be who he is and to lead in that way, which is why I think Wash was the perfect hire for this team and the perfect hire for Mike Trout. I love that he's inviting him to think about how good it was when he first came up, even though they didn't really win. They weren't super successful, but right. they were a team coming off of some winning seasons and they had Pujols and Torrey Hunter. And I get that he's probably got a lot of really great nostalgic memories from that. Bring that to today, mm -hmm. but also what, did, what, what happened? What can we learn and how can we be better? I love that he's empowering Trout to be who Trout is and empowering Trout to be the leader that this team desperately needs. Absolutely. And you know what, Mike, the only three people that were there during those days are Mike Trout, John Carpino, and Artie Marino. And mm -hmm. nobody knows where this team has been better than Mike Trout. And yep. so for Wash to lean on Trout's experience of where they've been, where they're going, where they want to be, I think is really uh, crucial to getting Mike Trout to that leadership position. And honestly, I think Ron Washington being somebody that everybody respects, including Mike Trout, it's it, to me, it's going to be just the way it was when Trout was playing for Sosha. And you could see the admiration and respect that he had for his manager back then. Johnny, the Angels got the eighth pick in the yes. 2024 MLB draft. It'll take place in June. Now, if there wasn't a uh, lottery for the pick, the Angels would have picked seventh. But I because know. there's a lottery, that means that teams that probably wouldn't have been high in the draft, like the Guardians, are now are now picking number one. So, yeah. Did you I'm, see that the Nationals actually won the first pick, but because they, they really are... again? Well... But because they're a revenue sharing payee, yeah. they yeah. get money from revenue sharing. They can't be that pick to, they can't be in the top two years in a row. So they actually, wow. they would have been seventh or sorry. No, they would have been first. The angels would have been sixth. Yeah. But then everything got shifted around so that the angels are seventh. They ended up at eighth, which fine. It's a top 10 sure. pick right sure. at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. And I made sure Mike that I got this right. Cause I got it totally and botched it on <laughs> Twitter yesterday, yeah. but I went back and looked. It's their highest draft pick since Troy Gloss mm -hmm. at number three in 1997. Wow. Wow. And they took uh, Nolan Shonowell, uh last year at 11. They took Zach Neto at 13 in 2022. Bachman at nine in 21. And Reed Detmers at 10 in 2020. All of those guys are on the major league roster right now. That? <laughs> and so that's great to see. Uh, now, again, if it was the old system, Angels would have picked probably sixth. But because of the lottery, they, they fell to eighth. So with the chance to take some, some really high players, I mean, they're going to be high in the draft top 10. Uh, it would be interesting to see what the angels will end up doing. Uh, Johnny, what would you like to see the angels do? How would you like to see them go about this? Now my initial gut reaction was get 
a high school starting pitcher yeah. that's going to be your future ace. Now I know somebody like Weaver was coming, uh, you know, he, he was coming out of college and so he became an ace. Yeah. Uh, so I think you can find an ace at college level and you can also find him at high school. But to me, if, if you're picking this high and there's an arm that good, then I would, I would go with the best arm available to you at eight so that you have an ace of the future. Hmm. Now, Mike, before you answer your side of things, I will say that uh, MLB.com, Jim Callis and Jonathan Mayo have said this is a very college heavy draft. Yeah. So there might not be a lot of high school options here. But Mike, I'm I'm going for a starting pitcher, but maybe that will change once we go through the mock draft here. What would you like to see them do? I I would say starting pitcher immediately, yeah. and 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 because because of like the 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 need for development, I would love yeah. to see them get somebody that they could spend a couple of years developing, and he would be the ace of the team in a couple of years, right? Now, now the good news is that yes, MLB.com their their first draft uh mock draft that they have they have college players but yeah. there are some arms in there so we do have our our pick of the litter but sometimes mike when you have a high draft pick like this you just got to take the best guy available yeah so even yeah. if it's not somebody that you necessarily need like maybe it was an outfielder for the angels sometimes teams just go ahead and take that guy right because one they might be your franchise guy or two you might be able to make a move with that guy and get the pieces that you do need. So let's take a look at who might be available in the top 10 based on MLB.com's mock draft. Mm. That'll give us an idea of, you know, who's going to go first, who's going to be around number eight. So maybe like six or seven yeah. or nine or something yeah. like that. Um, first up, Mike, there's JJ Weatherholt. They're taking him number one. He's an infielder who's got power. Uh, he's a base stealer and he hit near 450. In college, wow. Uh, number two is uh, Nick Kurtz. He's a first baseman, quality defender, hits well, and hits for power as well. Uh, Travis Bazana was taken at number three in this mock draft. He's a second baseman, and he's got power and speed and walks a lot as well. And then I saw our friend Jeff over at uh, Locked On Guardians, who is always keeping up with draft stuff. He said, "Guardians have number one pick. Bazana's the pick." He, oh, wow. He, he said he doesn't swing and miss. He makes all kinds of contact. He's the guy for him. So take that for what you will. Uh, Chase Burns, Mike, a right-handed pitcher out of Wake Forest who is known for their pitching labs. Listen to this. A 61% swing and miss rate. Nine, he sits 95 mm. to 97 on his fastball. Mm. And he can even touch 102 wow. on that fastball. Again, a college wow. arm right there. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hitters in this. I'm looking at the list right now, but there's do you, another. Do you want me to read this name for you? <laughs> well, yeah, you, you can read that name for me. I was actually looking at number seven, Brody Brecht, uh, oh, okay. another right-handed pitcher. Uh, there, the issue with him though is that he's a bit risky. He needs some polishing. He does have a triple-digit fastball and a really nasty slider. But Johnny, as I'm looking at the rest of this list, there really this list there really isn't other pitchers that are mentioned, and so. Burns yeah. is is one, and and then Brecht is another, um, and that's really kind of it. Everybody else are power hitting infielders or outfielders. There's Jack Caglianone, who is hey. a first baseman and a left handed pitcher, though Mike. Uh, most people see him as a hitter, though, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tommy White is a third baseman from LSU. They said he'll probably end up at first base in the long run, but they call him Tommy Tanks because he hits tanks. Mm. All day long. Now, mm. uh, kind of the throw a monkey wrench in all of this. Baseball Prospect Journal has the Angels taking someone named Braden Montgomery from Texas, oh, okay. from Texas A&M. He's a switch hitting outfielder and a right handed pitcher. Now, this is notable. They say that Chase Burns would go at seven as mm. opposed to four from MLB's mock draft. Baseball Prospect Journal says that Chase Burns might end up at seven for the Cardinals. Could he fall to eight and we get ourselves a starting pitcher? Yeah. Mike, if these are the names or kind of the names that might be there around pick eight, 
who would you go with? I think Chase Burns is probably the guy that you would hope would fall to you if he does yeah. fall, right? Like he's six foot four, 195 pounds right now. He's a righty, throws a four seam fastball slider, a curveball, a changeup from three uh, from a high three quarter arm slot. Burns is uh, primarily relying upon his fastball and his slider, generates a lot of swings and misses, and he accumulates a lot of strikes and does a nice job of attacking the strike zone and limiting his walks, which is exactly what Barry Enright talked about when he talked about the starting rotation currently for the angels. And he's a college guy. So he would be yeah. close to MLB ready. Maybe they could use him sooner than later. Mike, I'm going with Tommy white just because I, I love the idea of Tommy tanks. And I love the idea that there's a guy they could stick at third base. I know they said that in the long run, he might be a first baseman, Yeah, but maybe the angels can really work with him to get him to stick at third. So that way they have a backup plan when Rendon is done uh, Ren Hifo might not be around. I'm not even sure about his defense. We're hoping it gets better under Ron Washington. So for me, it's Tommy White, a.k.a. Tommy Tanks. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And if you haven't checked out Locked On Sports today, you need to check it out on YouTube. It's a 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's available to you whenever you want to just click. And they talk about local sports. They talk about national sports. It's fantastic. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, friends, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, make sure you come on over to YouTube. Comment below the video. Hit that thumbs up button. Really, honestly, helps out Mike and I a whole bunch if you hit that like button and leave some comments under the video. We want to hear from you after today's rant, or maybe you've got somebody in mind for the for the draft coming up in June. Uh, Mike, if there's no more hissy fits tomorrow, what are we going to cover on Locked On Angels tomorrow? <laughs> well, Johnny, there's a rumor that the Red Sox have prioritized Yamamoto, but then there's also a rumor that the Angels are in on Yamamoto. Yes. So the question we're going to wrestle with is, can the Angels sign Otani and Yamamoto? And if yes. they do, then what happens after that? Do they stop? Or should they go get more? So we're going to wrestle through all of those questions tomorrow on Locked On Angels. The answer is yes. <laughs> Segment solved. Segment no, solved. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Perfect. No, please come back tomorrow and join us for more Locked On Angels. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John, who doesn't Thanks. know how to understand a tease. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> all right, friends. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Trying to make Shohei a villain. Come on. <laughs> Ridiculous. Dumb. He's not a heel. He's a, he's a babyface. Right.